So hi everyone, today I'll be interviewing Clara, who is a technology consultant, and it will be really interesting to hear about her path and just how she got started. Hi everyone, so my name is Clara and I was a student at UBC. I studied business and computer science and graduated in 2019. Um, after that, I joined Accenture uh, June 2019 and started working there as a technology consulting analyst. Um, so I've been there for a year now and I've loved it ever since. Cool. So I guess about what you did in school, I know that you were in the same program as me, which is the business and computer science program. Did you do anything outside of school maybe, like extracurriculars or internships that helped you know that you wanted to be a technology consultant after you graduated? Mm -hmm, for sure. So I would say in terms of the professional career experience that I wanted to get, um, I first wanted to really explore more of the technical side of things in my uh, business and CS degree. So I first started off um, with my first co-op as a software developer at SAP, where I was doing a lot of uh, front end web development. Um, after that, I realized that, you know, I really like solving challenges, um, the logical reasoning behind all of the programming and that, that aspect of things. Mm -hmm. um, but I think one thing that was a little bit lacking for me was the communication aspect and, you know, being able to have a lot of communication with your team and with your clients and having that client-facing interaction. Yeah. Um, and so after that, I did an internship at Accenture, actually, um, in the Toronto office. And so that was kind of like the whole flip side of my educational background, doing something more on the business side of things, where I was really able to leverage the technical experience that I was able to gain through my first co-op. Um, for example, applying things like the software development life cycle into the, the practices that I had to do as a business analyst. Um, and so through that, I was able to really realize that I enjoyed consulting a lot. Um, and then in terms of extracurricular activities that also got me really involved with consulting was doing a lot of case competitions, right. um, as well as being involved in JDC West at UBC. So um, I did a couple of uh, case competitions. I did an international case competition in Hong Kong. And I also was on the JDC West BTM team. So that was business technology management. Um, and that was essentially an eight month period where you would be doing um, and reviewing business technology cases on a weekly basis or sometimes twice a week. And so through that, what I realized was I really liked you know, breaking down complex problems into, um, you know, different issues, how we bucket those, how we solve for them, and basically structuring how we would uh, solve different business cases. Um, and I really liked, you know, the organization, the logical reasoning that was applied in those cases. And so um, that's kind of what led me into the path of consulting. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really nice how like you did an internship in software engineering first and then you also did another one in technology consulting and then you were able to find out what you kind of liked better which is super cool <laughs> yeah and i think like it's it's the diversity that really also kind of gives you an extra edge too because yeah. now as a technology consultant i can say i've done more of the technical aspects and yeah. now on the flip side now i know how to communicate right. with people like developers and things like that yeah, because you understand their side yeah. exactly cool so what would a typical day look like as a consultant or is it more like a weekly basis do you have to travel or what does it kind of look like yeah i would say there is no typical day in the life <laughs> of a consultant which is what makes it so much fun um it, it's really dynamic and i think what drives kind of the work that you need to do is based on uh, the project that you're working on the industry that you're in as well as uh, kind of the role that you're playing on your team so typically as a consultant, there's a couple different roles that you can play. For instance, a business analyst where you're gathering requirements from your clients 
and then communicating that with the developers. Um, you could be someone involved with functional design, so someone who really understands uh, the software system that you're implementing really well and figuring out now how can you transform those requirements into um, actual design specifications. Yeah. Um, another aspect of it is project management. So sometimes you can be playing the role of project manager where you're creating roadmaps, allocating resources, figuring out what's required to ensure that the project uh, stays on time. Um, so those are a couple of different roles that you would play. Um, and then in terms of travel, I think that really, again, depends on the project that you're on. Um, personally, for me, I haven't traveled, um, and I've been doing mostly local projects. Uh -huh. But um, there are opportunities where sometimes you're staffed on a project that is out of town, and you'd be traveling Monday to Thursday and coming back on the weekends. Um, so it really, really depends on, you know, what project you're, you're working on. Uh -huh. um, other aspects of it is, uh, for me, I've been able to travel for training, so that's been pretty fun. Um, with Accenture, we have actually a huge kind of almost like university campus by Chicago in St. Charles, where we have training for analysts, consultants, managers. Essentially, every time you get a promotion, you'll be sent there for training. And um, it's, it's really fun because you get to meet and work with um, a bunch of people all across North America. Right. Um, so that's another aspect that's quite nice. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. So for the different projects that you staffed on, how long are usually the projects? Is it like um, a three month thing or do you work on one project for a whole year? How does that kind of work? Um, again, I would say that would vary project by project. There have been some projects that are a couple of weeks. There are some projects that go uh, till a year long. So it, it really depends. I think typically if it's um, more implementation focused in terms of like implementing a software, that will be a little bit longer, a couple months to a year or two. Um, if it's something more in the kind of the discovery phase, um, so where you're gathering requirements or understanding the scope of the project of the actual implementation that you're trying to sell, then that might be a shorter amount of uh, time period. Cool. So the next question I want to ask is, do you think there's any important skills that people should know that want to be a technology consultant, any uh, technical skills or soft skills that would be important? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I would say in terms of soft skills, um, as someone who has just graduated um, and looking at a career in consulting, that's probably the thing that um, they're looking at the most. Um, just because in terms of uh, like technical skills or any additional kind of more granular skills that you would need to know, that can be trained on the job. Okay. Um, so in terms of the soft skills that I would say that um, are typically in a consultant is the ability to solve problems. So having really strong problem solving skills, being able to break down those complex problems, structuring your thoughts, and being able to then communicate um, what the issue is and how to solve it. So the second part of that would be communication. Yeah. Um, you're typically on a job very much client facing, talking to clients, talking to your team, talking to developers. Mm -hmm. um, and so communication skills are very, very essential here. Um, and then I'd say the last one would be um, adaptability and being able to really be okay and comfortable with working under ambiguous situations. Um, I think a lot of times because in consulting, you're working at such a fast pace and you're constantly learning different topics, mm -hmm. um, that being comfortable with not knowing everything um, and being able to be resourceful and going to the people that do know um, those topic areas, and then being able to wrap up really quickly uh, is something really important in consulting. Cool. Are there any technical certifications or programming languages that technology consultants need to know? Or is it more just based on uh, maybe your education and then their training on the job sort of thing? Yeah, I would say that in terms of technical skills, those are something that is typically trained on the job just because the variety of projects you could be working on are so vast that a lot of the times you don't even know what project you would get 
thrown into. Um, but I would say there is merit to having those technical skills, especially when you're, you know, coming in for an interview and saying, hey, I've already had experience doing X, Y, Z, and now I can leverage that in terms of um, the different projects that we can now work on. Right. So I think that is helpful. Um, I think one thing in terms of technology that would be uh, good for someone to know is um, being able to talk about the current events and the recent news on different technology trends. So one thing Accenture has every year is um, they post Accenture's top tech visions. And it really talks about, you know, what are the latest trends around technology, what's important, um, and what's kind of up and coming this year. So that's something that personally, when I was interviewing for Accenture, I read up on just to get the latest scoop and see what are the kind of main projects and the focus that Accenture is heading into. Cool. What are some of the challenges that you face as a technology consultant? Are there something, some tasks in particular that you find are really hard or take a lot of time to do? This is a good one. <laughs> I would say um, the biggest challenge of consulting is um, the really the dynamic work that you are involved with. And quite honestly, I think it's, it's not for everyone. Um, just because you are oftentimes kind of thrown into the deep end in a lot of, in a lot of things that you aren't familiar with. Um, and you're going to be switching from one project to another. And especially, I think, more at the entry level where you aren't yet specialized in a particular topic area. Um, you really need to be comfortable with just going like boom, boom, boom and picking things up really quickly yeah. um, and just learning really, really quickly at, at like kind of like a really fast pace. Right. And so I would say that's the biggest challenge. But on the other side, that's also what keeps things really interesting. And uh, the fact that you're always learning new things is something that um, I really enjoy. Yeah, for sure. So do you have a mentor or other people who have more experience helping you out at the beginning? Or is it, like you said, you just throw into the deep end and you're learning everything yourself and picking up new skills? <laughs> No, so do you definitely have a lot of resources that you can reach out to? Yeah. So um, obviously with every project that you're on, you typically have a team that you can um, ask for advice from. Um, and the nice thing about Accenture is that we're a global company. So we have a lot of resources. We have something called the KX, which is something that you can um, access online. It's kind of like an online database of all the resources and past projects that we've done in the related area. That's we cool. also have different uh, groups that we can reach out to, kind of like communities, um, mm -hmm. where you can talk to different subject matter experts um, for specific projects. Um, and then also, I think for me at least, I've had a lot of support from my um, project leads and my career counselors um, who have been able to provide me with support whenever I needed it. Cool. Are there any opportunities that you see in this field? Is, are technology consultants just grouped into one group usually or are there subdivisions in technology consulting and they work on different types of technologies? Hmm, yeah, for sure. So um, I would say that there are definitely a lot of opportunities in this field just because technology in today's age really impacts all industries and all lines of business, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of how uh, Accenture works, so for someone who is a new grad um, applying as a consulting analyst to Accenture, you get hired into something called the Consulting Development Program, CDP. Um, and so what happens is you are starting off more as kind of a general consultant at first. So you're not aligned to a particular industry, you're not aligned to the type of consulting that you're doing or technology. 
Um, so you can that that's the nice thing is you can try out different things. You can do something more on the management consulting side. You can do something more on the technology consulting side. And you can work in different industries. Um, and then in addition to that, once you get promoted into consultant, that's when you start to build a more more of niche area of expertise. So that's where you kind of start to decide, okay, this is the industry that I want to be aligned to, or this is the functional area that I want to be an expert in. Um, or this is the technology that I want to have uh, more deeper expertise in. So basically, once you've gotten promoted to consultant, that's kind of where you choose your specialization. Cool. And I guess one last question for you is, are there any advice for students who might be interested in getting into technology consulting, uh, maybe like an internship or even their first job out of college? Are there specific resources or classes that would really help them out? Yeah, for sure. So I would say the first piece of advice is don't be afraid to network and to reach out to people who currently work in consulting or at the consulting firms that you might want to apply for. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason for this is because um, I think a lot of times communication, as I mentioned, is a really important aspect. And so people who are recruiting will really be able to see that. Um, I would say in the Vancouver office, networking is a really, really important thing just because we have such a small community. Um, so everyone kind of knows each other already. Um, and so I would highly recommend just reaching out to different people for coffee chats. And one thing that I've seen across the board is everyone at Accenture is always really willing to help and give you the time of day to kind of walk you through um, the kind of work that we do and provide any sort of tips and tricks. So. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I would say, like, network and reach out to people at the consulting firms that you want to apply for. Cool. Um, and then uh, in terms of resources, I would say um, definitely practice uh, your cases. Um, so Accenture has, I think, like a case book if you search it up online. Um, there's other case uh, study or, sorry, uh, case interview prep books that you can look into. Um, the other thing is the tech visions, so that would be another great resource just to brush up on kind of current events on technology. Um, and then I would say just make sure you research the, co the company that you're applying for. Know why you want to apply for consulting and why specifically that firm. Cool. So the way that tech consulting interviews are set up, is it more a case study based or do they also test you on programming? So it's um, typically two parts. There's a behavioral section um, where you have kind of all your typical behavioral questions, asking about you know situations like leadership, communication, uh, situations where you faced a challenge, those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And then the second portion of that would be the case interview. Mm -hmm. So the case interview is typically where they provide um, the candidate with the business case, and it's um, a case where there's a couple problems and then um, they look for the candidate to structure out those problems and figure out a way to solve that. Cool. Um, so typically with, um, at least with Accenture, we don't uh, do any sort of more technical questions. So no, nothing about programming skills or anything like that. But I would say that, like, again, if you do have that kind of experience, to kind of be able to bring that into your responses. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so thank you so much for doing this interview. This was really helpful. And I think I learned a lot about the role and just how you got started and everything. So thank you so much. Yeah, for sure. Um, thanks so much for having me. This is super fun. Um, and I guess for anyone who's interested in learning more about a Korean consulting, they can definitely uh, reach out to me. So I can definitely provide my like LinkedIn details if that's something that, uh, yeah. Thank you. All right, thank you.